Mother's Day, everybody. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mama. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mama's Day. I got a bonus mama. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Living in the Word. We are so happy that you decided to tune in and join us as we continue our conversation on the process. The process. And I think this Mother's Day, well, you know, what, what other way to talk about a process than motherhood? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 It was, yeah. a, it, was, it was a process. Mm -hmm. You know, as my mother always reminds me, it took a village. Took Amen. A village. I, it I continues I, to take a village. I think I turned out all right. <laughs> <laughs> Before we hop back into the um, today's topic, I just want to give a couple of announcements. As always, we are in person in the sanctuary. Come on back. You can come back next week. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, we're starting at 10 a.m. here mm -hmm. at 1067th Street North, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. On um, Wednesdays, you can also join us for Wednesdays in the Word, mm -hmm. starting at 5.30 for prayer. Um, that phone number is 351-999-3535. And right after that, come on in the sanctuary for 6 p.m. Bible study with mm -hmm. Minister Hogan. Mm -hmm. And stay on over a little bit longer mm -hmm. with um, our young adults pastor, Minister Cole. Amen. 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 So, guys, what are we discussing today in today's process? We are talking about process we're talking yeah. about process yeah process today's process yeah. is the process yeah, the process is the process <laughs> okay. how, how many of you ever been through been processed my God. Yeah. I'm eating some processed stuff. You eat some processed stuff? Yeah. You know, I like a good chicken nugget every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> and now and then. And now and then. So what exactly is the process? the process? What is the process? Well, What is process? A process mm -hmm. is a series of actions or steps in order to achieve a particular end. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's Webster. Mm -hmm. A series of actions or steps. And then but this is Jeremiah. Okay. okay. Jeremiah says, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Says the Lord. All right. Thoughts of peace yeah. and not of evil to give you what? An expected yeah. end. And so God has a process for you too. Mm -hmm. right. And so so what we're talking about is God's process. Now we we talked about on our last lesson, we talked about patience. Mm -hmm. We talked about being obedient. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Noah mm -hmm. right? and how he had to be patient, how he had to be obedient, how mm -hmm. he had to follow specific steps mm -hmm. in order to get the end mm -hmm. um, that God had expected, you know, because he was ready to... He gave up on them kids. Yeah. I was thinking I wanted to laugh. But years ago, there was this lady that went off on that kid, mm -hmm. and they caught it on tape. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. And uh, she just went off on that kid, and I was like, oh, man, she just went off on him. And, I, and Vanessa looked and said, you don't know what that kid said to him, to her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was God, God is just, he was fed up with man. Yeah. He was fed up. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they had all these bad thoughts and everything. But... One of the things that I, I, I hope we could address in process is that process is a series of steps, and we mm -hmm. can't be skipping steps. Mm -hmm. right. When you skip steps, you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that we hope to talk about, because um, Deacon Mason is going to talk about Abraham right. mm -hmm. and um, fulfilling God's promises ourselves right. mm -hmm. instead of letting him fulfill his promise <laughs> Amen. and then we um what what i love is um avery said this she says sometimes we need to purge the world's process out of us mm -hmm. and um and I, I i love that because we start using our process trying to substitute it for God's process. Ooh, Lord. I said that. You, you said that. I wrote it down. Hey, I was like, wrote it down. <laughs> but you know, it's funny, before um, Deacon Mason um, leads us through this one, as we're talking even today on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. like the process of motherhood, you Ooh. know, whether it be, you know, a birth mother mm -hmm. or a surrogate mama mm -hmm. or, you know, another another mother figure to mm -hmm. you, that, that's a process. That's a huge process. You know, I think about, um, it takes 40 weeks. As we yeah. talked last week, we learned about how 40 is the number of um, suffering. Amen. Yeah. And I, I haven't had the pleasure of bearing a child yet. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I, I can imagine that, you know, you can't skip steps, you know. Mm -hmm. My mom is a labor and delivery mm -hmm. specialist. Mm -hmm. and, um, specialist. Yeah, she, she's been in that all my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think about, you know, first trimester, and second mm -hmm. trimester, and third trimester, and, mm -hmm. you know, the different levels of development and growth and how um, gestation, as you said, like even the laws are changing mm -hmm. about when a baby can survive or when mm -hmm. a baby is considered valuable, mm -hmm. you know, is the legal term. We can deal with that later. Mm -hmm. But even before we get into Abraham, I think about Sarah's process of motherhood. Mm -hmm. You know, like here we are on Mother's Day and she wanted a baby. Mm -hmm. She wanted that baby bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and she kind of skipped the step in order to get that baby. Yeah. And then she about ran out with that child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Ishmael yeah. had to go. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not gonna spoil yeah. the story for us, but yeah. you know, th there is a process um, in order to birth anything. Mm -hmm. Whether that just with not just with the women, not just with motherhood. But to birth something, I'm mm -hmm. sure there was a process to birth the business, yeah. peak performance. I'm yeah. sure there, there is a process, you know, to get from Atlanta to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I-20. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a process. Mm -hmm. So come on, Deacon Mason. I'm, I'm not going to hold you. Um, getting to Abraham is a process. Mm -hmm. Because God created the world. He created heaven on earth. He got off course, so he started again. Uh, with Abraham, with uh, Noah, uh, giving us another chance. Now, he's made some covenants with uh, Adam. He made some with Abraham, no, nah, with Noah. Now he's with Abraham because they've sort of gotten off course again. And so Abraham is not even a believer at this time. Mm. He ain't following Christ. Mm. He, he'd rather follow a statue mm. than Christ. Mm. But God's calling him out. So, so no matter where people have been there in their lives, God can use anybody. It says that he can harden the heart of Pharaoh or he can soften Pharaoh's heart mm -hmm. in order to get his people out of Egypt. And so wherever your Egypt is, God can deliver you. Amen. So Abraham not only was uh, doing idol worship, but his wife. And she could not bring forth uh, children, so he had a ch he had a challenge there. He, and plus, he was getting old. Hmm. So Sarah was getting up in age. He's getting up in age, and it's like, well, you know, it's not going to work out for us. Mm -hmm. And so, when God calls him out, all you really need is God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You and God can do anything. Amen. 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 And there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Well, no matter what the doctor have said, no matter what data and statistics say, God can change that outcome. Amen. And so he reached in here, and, and that's what he's going to do. He called him Abraham. Mm -hmm. But Abraham feels like he can't go forward without taking a bunch of people with him. <laughs> he has to separate him from his dad. He's eventually going to have to separate him from Lot. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to have to build his confidence in the fact that he has the God with him. Now, so, hold on. Mm -hmm. Is this Abraham the father of faith? Well, you know, that's a process, <laughs> too. Uh, Oh, hold on, hold on, it's the same man. I mean, if you put a seed in the ground, it don't come up the next day. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But he started the somewhere. father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Many na He, he had that. That was information. Uh, <laughs> that was information? That was, that was just information. <laughs> he hadn't got that revelation. <laughs> he looked at his body. He had a transformation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there you go. He said, this ain't going to work out. God, uh, really? Yeah. They, yeah, but they didn't have the pills back then. They didn't have the pills back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so they're going to have to go through something yeah. in order to get there. Mm -hmm. First, he's going to have to separate him from Lot. Then he's going to have to let him know that he's going to have to protect his woman mm -hmm. a little bit better than he's been doing. Oh, oh he's, he's sending her out it, there. Yeah. That's my sister. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, she was. Uh, technically. Yeah, technically. Technically, she was. But you don't flirt with your sister. 
the way that you know. Well, you know, this is a different day. I understand. Yeah, day. <laughs> the, the point is, you know, don't get no ideas. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, God is telling him that He's going to call him out of his country, call him out of his father's house. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you've got to come out of these places in order for God to use them. You know, in my life, you know, either God removed people from my life, Mm -hmm. not through death, just just got them out of the way, or he removed me from their lives because it wasn't allowing me to progress and get to the point where he needed me to be. I, I was I was going to say one of the, one of the fascinating things about life for me mm-hmm. is the very first job that I have had was like a little I was a cashier at a little fast food restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it it exposed me to all different types of people mm-hmm. and all different types of things that in my home life in my regular life I would have never been exposed to, mm-hmm. and I, I took that. You know, just looking back on it, that was a process in and of itself. Mm-hmm. My parents had, they had strict rules and regulations and things of that nature, mm-hmm. and they reared us in a way that they want, they thought we should go. Mm-hmm. But in doing so, I wasn't exposed to a lot of stuff that other people were doing and right. saying and what have you. But when I first went to work, yeah. I was in an atmosphere where I get a quick education quick. To, to another side. <laughs> it was quick. It was, I wasn't expected to stay there, yeah. mm-hmm. but I got a quick education and that was a part of my process right. to get me to a place where I could understand people. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily have to go through everything, right. but you do need to be exposed to some things yeah. to be able to help somebody. Mm-hmm. And, and I see that mm-hmm. uh, with Abraham. He, he was around his family, but you know, yeah. now it's time to pull you out of that right. and set you on another, another path. And I think that's a process that all of us can learn from. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking about, about two sessions ago, we started talking about seed. Right. Mm-hmm. And that seed, some seed was in a rocky place. Right. And, um, and so it couldn't grow mm-hmm. because as soon as it sprang up, it would die. Mm-hmm. And so in order to get that seed in a good place, you've got, mm-hmm. got to be in a, in a different ground. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I just think. And, and so he's working on that ground mm-hmm. in Abram. Mm-hmm. Not Abraham yet. Mm-hmm. He's Abram. Mm-hmm. And so he's working on that ground. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to separate him from Lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he thinks he can take Lot with him. Uh, because he's family, because he's blood, and, mm-hmm. and he probably figuring blood is thicker than water. <laughs> but the reality is that the way that's supposed to go is that it's the, uh, the blood of covenant mm-hmm. is thicker than the water of the womb. Come on now. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But if you want to get colloquial and do what they do down the street, mm-hmm. then, you know, we brothers and sisters, we always going to be close. Mm-hmm. And so... When you, when you do it like that, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Uh, when you get married, the cold, mm-hmm. I'm still close to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I, may, I might feel like I can overstep cold. Because, because I've known you longer. Mm, I've known yeah. you longer. You're my sister. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 it's yeah. Than we're yeah. the same mood. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's funny that um, we've been talking about that because mm. that's a process in itself. Mm-hmm. It is. You know, removing people or, mm-hmm. you know, being free from people's opinions mm-hmm. or people pleasing, so mm-hmm. to speak, um, especially as a daughter. Yeah. Um, and I am blessed to have a daddy and two brothers. Yeah. Amen. My mm-hmm. brothers are 12 and nine years older than me. Okay. So, so really, they think I have three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. They love me. But, but mm-hmm. you know, just think about it. When I was five, mm-hmm. they were 17 mm-hmm. and, you know, 14. Yeah. <laughs> so they were, you know, they, they expect me to be, yeah. to follow behind them mm-hmm. or to do, mm-hmm. do, do what they say. And th- that's a challenge, right? Yeah, a challenge. To, to remove that or, you know, all of my life I mm-hmm. have 
taking every decision, every big decision to those three men. Mm-hmm. You know, um, whether it was I'm going to school, or I'm thinking about taking this job, or I'm thinking about doing this or doing that, buying this house, you know, mm-hmm. wh- what should I do? I remember the first time I went to go look at a piece of property I was interested mm-hmm. in buying. I was still living in Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. I was um, working for the university at the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would not take an appointment with that realtor without my dad and my big brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't want anybody trying to get over on me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to have all their wisdom and all their mm-hmm. backing and all their support. Yeah. And, and I think that's great. I think yeah, it is good. wonderful to have a, uh, a, a family environment where you have strong men and strong mm-hmm. protective figures. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I tell anybody who listen that I'm not me without them, mm-hmm. right? right? Like they had, they had my back, they let me fly. Mm-hmm. It, it, it gave me the opportunity to grow and do those things. But then came a time, hallelujah, mm-hmm. <laughs> where um, we had to separate. Mm-hmm. You know, um, th- that wasn't the man that I'm listening to anymore. Right. You know, I, and I still love my daddy. I still listen to his wisdom, you know, mm-hmm. but 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 that's not who I answer to anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And so many times I think we can put people even over God, yeah. you know, um, yeah. you'll be so attached to what people have to say mm-hmm. that you won't hear what God is saying, yes. you know, or I think about even in a job, you know, you can get so close to people. And I know you've taught me this, um, mm-hmm. mama, it's been, you know, as you grow and as you elevate, you know, sometimes you have to separate from those people who you came in with. Because yeah. as you get more leadership or you get more promotion or mm-hmm. you get different opportunities, you know, there has to be some distance kind of created right. between mm-hmm. the two. I can remember taking my first real job down in Tuscaloosa and, you know, I started as a student worker with mm-hmm. everybody else. Mm-hmm. And But at one point then I graduated mm-hmm. and they were still in undergrad, but I was mm-hmm. in graduate school. Mm-hmm. So now I'm the graduate assistant. Mm-hmm. And so now I kind of have some responsibility above them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, let time have it as it may, I then graduated graduate school mm-hmm. and now I am an employee and they're still in undergrad. Yeah. And so now I'm approving their time or I'm doing stuff. And that distance was hard. Mm-hmm. It was hard. I felt like I lost my buddies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I lost my friends, you know, but, but, but that's, part of that's part of growth. Yeah. That's part of growth. You talked about that plant of sometimes you got to separate that pot. Mm-hmm. You know, that pot's too little. It can't, can't grow anymore. Mm-hmm. You got to move it from one thing to the next. So Abram had to go and Lot had to go too. Lot's, Lot's going to have to go. Lot had mm-hmm. to go. Because if, um, if you can't separate him from you, then God's going to remove him. Mm. And so it became a, a battle over uh, land and water. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Abram told him to make his choice. Mm-hmm. And so he chose the land that, that went towards uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abram just took whatever was left. Mm-hmm. See, the favor is on Abram. Mm-hmm. Once God is, is with you, you have favor. Even when, uh, when he goes, and, and here's the thing with Lot. He goes down to Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he's trying to prosper there, but there's a lot of bad things happening. And you can't live in that environment without it not affecting you. Mm-hmm. People seem to give in a little bit here. There. It's sort of like in Atlanta. If you want to drive the speed limit, you can. <laughs> but you're gonna get but ran you, over. <laughs> you're gonna be a you're gonna be a hazard. <laughs> yeah. And you subject to get a ticket mm. for driving for the being, speed limit. For, for for driving traffic. the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a crazy world. <laughs> it's a crazy it, world. It, it, but that's sort of the way it is. Now, mm-hmm. if you wanna drive at midnight when nobody is out there, you know, you can do that safely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as long as everybody else is driving 20 miles over above the speed You better be going over the speed You better be getting there. Wow. Um, So he got there. He got influenced. Even when um, God went to destroy it and uh, Lot was saved, Lot still came out with that spirit in it because he spent too much time in the presence of death. Mm -hmm. And once you spend that that influence on you, you... He's having what children from, with his uh, with his children. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a bad influence once you get there. Mm-hmm. Um, some things in Abram's going to have to change, even though he has the favor of God, and the favor of God keeps showing up again and again. He goes to Egypt. 
he says, tell Pharaoh that you are my sister unless something comes up against him. <laughs> but God wouldn't allow, because God's going to multiply his seed through Sarah. Mm -hmm. So he cannot allow someone else to touch her and say, yes. or have in his voice mm -hmm. that that could possibly be my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he stops him up. Yeah. He, and he does that a couple of times for, for Abram. Um, but that's what he's doing to protect his word. Mm -hmm. He has to intervene to keep us from destroying ourselves. And a lot of times it's not somebody else that's destroying us. It is the decisions that we are making. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You know what I love in that story um, is Genesis 15. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple chapters over is mm -hmm. we see that God intervenes to make mm -hmm. a covenant with mm -hmm. Abel. Mm -hmm. You know, so many, there, um, there's a quote by Lisa Brevere, mm -hmm. um, and it says that, you know, if you think that you have enough control over your life to ruin mm -hmm. it or make it, then you just don't realize how powerless you really are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that God has the authority and the ability to step in. Because mm -hmm. here we see in Genesis chapter 15, when God makes his covenant with Abram, Abram is asleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. lay that man down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he yeah. says, listen, cause you, you, can, you can't have your hands in this. We see what you done did down there in Egypt. Yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. let, let me do me. Let me be God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to make this covenant with you. And mm -hmm. I'm going to show you mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah. And I think that that's so, you know, encouraging for us. That so many times that so we can get off track or mm -hmm. we can do things the wrong way. Or, mm -hmm. you know, we can try to help God out. Right. But God being so sovereign and so all powerful that he can step in if we submit to him and invite him to do that. The, the, this covenant is not just with Abraham. It's for every generation that comes along after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it's an important covenant. And who's going to make it happen? The same one he did with Noah. The rainbow is still in the sky. Mm -hmm. Let it rain, you see the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Have your remembrance. So ever since then, that covenant still exists. Mm -hmm. And so now he's making one with Abraham, and we are still being blessed because of it. Mm -hmm. Abraham himself, if we depended on him, we'd all be in the ditch. Yeah. Wow. I was just thinking about how often do, you know, we, we blame the devil mm -hmm. when we're trying to do what we think is right, and the Lord is just protecting his word that he's given to you, you know. I think it's, Paul says the sin that so easily besets sense. us. Mm -hmm. So there's something within us. But let's think about it. We're still going back to Adam here. Mm -hmm. Once the fall happened, it, it happened to us all. Mm -hmm. So if I'm eating too much cake at the house, mm -hmm. when I know I want to lose these extra pounds, mm -hmm. <laughs> And I didn't get no red velvet either. So. Oh, <laughs> God bless you. Like once a year. It's okay. It's a once a year. No lemon bar. No lemon bar. Oh, Maybe Lord. twice a year. Even with the new icing on mm. there. I didn't get mm. none of that type mm. of stuff. I, I, I will partake for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. I, I, don't, want to, I don't want you to stumble uh, with, with your process. I'll, 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 I'll try to tread milk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's the way it is in life, I think. If you're going to eat the cake, um, you know you're going to have to work out on the treadmill. Yes. But you know what else is so interesting about that process that mm -hmm. I've learned the hard way is you can't outwork a bad diet. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's true. But like, you, yeah. like, no matter how hard I run, mm -hmm. you know, that, that McDonald's is going to steal on me. That ice cream Every diet ain't going to work out. It ain't going to work out. Mm -hmm. You know, that Chick-fil-A, God bless them. Mm -hmm. that it really, it's going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they're still trying to... Uh, trying to, to get the seed mm -hmm. through Sarah. Mm -hmm. And Sarah is saying, I'm getting too old. Mm -hmm. So God has made them a promise, and they decided that they were going to help. Help God. Yeah, they're going to help God out. Wow. Take my hand, mate. <laughs> would you do that? Would you? No, I don't believe I would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have that in there. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. You know, I think that, that was, that was a, you know, initially it was a thought of, well, this will work. Yeah. But I think we were talking earlier, and I, I don't think she thought that through. Yeah. Because yeah. this will work, but you know, once you have the baby, you're still dealing with 
the effects of the baby's actual physical mother. Right. You're, you're looking into the baby's eyes and you're not seeing anything of you right. in that child. Mm -hmm. And as the child grows older and they're mm -hmm. laughing and smiling and grinning and doing these things, yeah. now you're feeling a little put off because right. I really didn't have anything to do with this. Right. I'm cut out yeah. of this situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no. No. <laughs> you look good. No. 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 Uh, no. no. And, and that becomes the issue when you do not see the whole process. Mm -hmm. See, God sees the whole process. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about how uh, he has removed people from my life. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going to happen here. The child's going to have to be removed. Mm -hmm. It's because people are getting hurt here because... Sarah and Abraham agreed to do something that was not in God's it, plan. It was not a part of the plan, that's right. Why do we think we can help God and he made everything? Because the process is slow. It's slow. Mm -hmm. See, time, mm -hmm. waiting. Mm -hmm. we're, we're waiting and I'm getting older. I'm 90 years old, I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. My wife is getting older. Cease to be with her like it was with women. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible. In my mind. In my mind. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. Mm -hmm. Amen. There, there's nothing too hard for mm -hmm. him. Wow. Well, I think, too, you know, that appeared, Satan likes to appease mm -hmm. and, you know, um, tempt our desire to be helpers. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. like God created women to be helped. Right, yeah. we are help meets, right? Right. And you know, even when we go back to Eve, mm -hmm. he appealed to her godliness, her mm -hmm. desire to be like God. Mm -hmm. Like like mm -hmm. I don't think Eve set out to say, you know, I'm gonna disobey God this morning. Mm -hmm. No. It, it it was a, you know, this can make me like God. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks right? Good. It looks good. It's pleasing to the eye. It'll be you know, it'll make me wise. Mm -hmm. it, it will do things to make me this like will help God. Us. It'll help us. It'll help mm -hmm. us. It's a good idea. And you know, I remember um Sarah Jakes Roberts, she has this program called Woman Evolve and it just mm -hmm. makes me so happy because it helps me remember that I too got a little Eve in me where I know better and I don't do better. Mm -hmm. Or I got a little Sarah in me where you know I'm trying to help God out because mm -hmm. he said this mm -hmm. so surely you know faith without works is dead. I'm putting my own spin on it, mm -hmm. right? You know we all have characteristics that we see of people in the Bible of, you know, it's easy to, to, to go down that road. Mm -hmm. You think, think about it in your own mind. If something was taken 25 years, you didn't think one time about what mm -hmm. you could have done differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, something's not working out the way you want it to work mm -hmm. out, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can tinker with it a little bit. You know, we don't ever, in, I don't think anyone intends to be malicious or manipulative, but like you you always say that, you know, the road to hell is paved with great intentions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good wonderful intentions. intentions. Good wonderful intentions. intentions. You, you meant well. Yeah. She, she didn't mean for, you know, Ishmael to run out with her so quickly. Yeah. You know, she really thought it was going to work out just fine. And, and, and they do. God's vision is so far ahead here. You know, he's, he's telling Abraham about... Uh, what's going to happen down the road? Mm -hmm. uh, how the uh, the the, the uh, Hebrews themselves are going to be enslaved, mm -hmm. and then how they're going to come out of that after 400 years, mm -hmm. and but he's still trying to get them to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though there'll become a time where they they act like they don't remember Abraham or anything that he said. Uh, they don't, you know, the new Pharaoh don't even remember Joseph. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but you, we have to constantly teach God's word so Absolutely. that, you know, they say bind it around their neck, mm -hmm. put it over your doorpost, live it out in your life. Mm -hmm. And then people are more easily buy into it. Yes. But if that's just something they say, I heard down the road, it sounds like something from the rumor mill. Nobody's going to really follow it if it's mm -hmm. not. But so, how did Abram, mm -hmm. Abraham, mm -hmm. get from all of this mm -hmm. to knowing that God's word was so true that if he, if he had to kill his son, mm -hmm. that in order for God to fulfill His promise, that mm -hmm. He would have to that He would raise him up. Mm -hmm. What is it, 25, 50? How long did it take? 25 years. 25 years mm -hmm. for him to get 
to that. Mm -hmm. And so it just seems like, you know, he was out there. His, you know, sending his, his wife, called his sister, yeah. you know, the lot, the yeah. daddy thing, yeah. and all that. And, and then he's still getting older. He's getting older. He's still yeah. getting older. Yeah. So. But once God renewed him, he, he seemed to multiply. Yeah. But, um, but it does take sometimes some extraordinary uh, events in our lives. Now, we shouldn't be walking around here looking for great miracles every, every other minute. Mm -hmm. You know, some of this I can just learn from watching one of you. Mm -hmm. Experience is read, the lowest level yeah. of learning. Or we read here in the Bible mm -hmm. how it, it has worked out. Mm -hmm. And so we need to learn from that. You know, if they're telling you that you can get sick from doing this, mm -hmm. and you're saying, no, I ain't going to do it, I ain't wearing no mask. Mm -hmm. And then you go out there and get sick, and then mm -hmm. next thing you know, now you got a revelation because mm -hmm. you've been <laughs> at a near dick, a near <laughs> death experience. Mm -hmm. But you didn't have to go that far. It is, we are supposed to be committed to making sure that word gets out there. It took a lot mm -hmm. for Abraham to come to the faith, to believe God. But God is constantly pricking at our heart with the Holy Spirit to reveal to us that we need him. He says, every man is given a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's enough faith to know that we need God, not enough to make it on our own, mm -hmm. but that we're going to need Jesus to survive. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the whole thing with the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. You need Jesus to survive. Are we getting there? Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I I was thinking about something. I, mm -hmm. I know we're yeah we're out of time, almost out of time, but that's really a case for our elders. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, you want to dis discard your elders, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I I see a lot of elders as wise. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you something. I believe it was hard earned wisdom for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because they can tell you. Most of the time, because they were that person, right? You know, mm -hmm. and I, I've always said that I trust a person who's done something and mm -hmm. failed and right. learned from that mistake. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I talk to a lot of older folks that have done it and messed up, right? And they say, "Son, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I ain't just telling you because I want you not to do it." You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these older people, they were just as bad as we were. Mm -hmm. Or worse, yeah. Or worse, you know. Mm -hmm. And we've done some bad things in our lives, but um, but that that's one of those things, those hard learned lessons. When when you know, for you to respect your elders, right? You know, sometimes they can tell you, "Look, I I did this. Mm -hmm. Don't do it." Yeah. And you see you see these elders walking by faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about Miss Goodman. Mm -hmm. You know, and and how she walked by faith. But mm -hmm. I remember, right. When I was a kid, she was a, a single mom, mm -hmm. you know, after, after they, they got divorced mm -hmm. and how she had to work yeah. and do things and mm -hmm. put stuff together, mm -hmm. you know, that we would send sugar, they mm -hmm. would send flour, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, so now they, they've learned to walk by faith right. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not by sight. And um, so when they say, you know, you got to trust God, mm -hmm. it came from a lifetime of trusting God. And God right. showing up. And God, God showing, showing up. up. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, it, it, it wasn't just something that was said. It was right. something that was lived. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the covenant, the covenant is to, 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 to you die. Mm -hmm. that, that's what this is. Now, God's not going to die. But in Abraham's scenario in, in chapter 15 there, he was going to eventually die. Gonna die. <laughs> but God is going to take care of him. Mm -hmm. And even though he gives him a covenant of circumcision here, the circumcision here is uh, it's not going to change anybody's heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it may keep you from getting a disease, <laughs> but uh, it's not going to change anybody's heart. What you need is a circumcised heart. Mm -hmm. You need a, a way for it to be cleansed and to stay whole. And so until your heart is circumcised, you're going to be constantly, like in Genesis, like in, uh, like in Judges, you're going to be on that cycle, cycle. over mm -hmm. and over again. Amen.
think he's brought us a word that's gonna take us to the next step. I think so too. Uh -huh. I think so too. Mm -hmm. So in the words of my daddy, y'all just keep on living. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep on living. Uh, <laughs> and you'll learn. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep we'll see you next time on Living in the Word. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.